Um, I have quite a few people write to me and say, you know, um, I really love the practice. I really love Ashtanga. But I find that if I practice more than, say, three times a week, uh, and generally we're prescribing sort of uh, five, six times a week, then uh, I feel exhausted, I feel drained, and I feel I can't do anything else. So what are they doing to themselves that's putting them in the situation where they feel that the practice isn't, the physical practice is not supporting them as, that as a person? That means they're overdoing it. They're doing too much. They're doing too much. Yeah. They're doing too much. You said six days a week, and mm. I would say seven days a week. Right. So you would say d- practice the physical practice of yoga seven, seven days, days a, week. a week. Okay. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. And so, so at the same intensity or change the intensity? Change the intensity is according right. to the need of the body. Right. Yeah. Okay. But you have to always build it up. It cannot be done overnight. Yeah. It is the constant perseverance and practice that builds up the strength. It's not like a capsule which you can take into the NCOKM. Okay, I'm I'm ready enough. to go. Yeah, ready to go. But you don't feel that the body needs a day of recovery or, a, or that by practicing, because seven days a week means every day of the month and every day of the year and every, every day, day of, of ten years. The, the body doesn't need a break to actually recover from what you've, you've been doing on the days before? If the body needs food every day. Right. Yoga is also an essential part of your living every day. Right. Okay. That's good. It so happens that I tend to practice almost every day <laughs> quite a bit, so that sort of fits. Now I have something to back it up with. Yeah. <laughs> so that's quite good. Yeah. Okay, so um, it can become a little bit addictive also, the physical pursuance of, shall we say, um, strength or, or exercise. Or uh, Is there a, a limit to what we should be how we should be using our body, yeah? So the, the, the postures get more and more difficult as we go through the series, yes. the more and more demanding on yes. the body. Yes. Is it a good thing for all the different body types to see themselves progressing through the different Ashtanga series? Or is there a, is it, what's your view on where we should be going yeah. to? You can always mark your line and see I can do up till this much and this much is enough for me. Yeah. Just, uh, it's like your stomach. You yeah. can eat a certain quantum of food and you can decide for yourself that now my stomach is full and I don't need more than this. Similarly with the exercise. The easiest technique which Ayurveda has uh, prescribed is you slow down on exercise once you start perspiring under your arms. Okay. So in this weather we'd probably just walk through the door and (laughs) (laughs) turn around and go back out again. Yeah, but it's not now. But when you start your exercises in the morning, I'm sure it's not going to be the same situation. Yeah, although it's pretty warm. Yeah, Yeah, okay. So when you start perspiring under the arms... Yes, when you start perspiring under the arms, that's that's your physical limit. You can just go a little above that to derive a little more strength out of it. And then you go down. Okay. So I would say that, generally speaking, at this time of year, uh, that everybody in the shala is covered in sweat by the time they've finished. Yes. So are they doing way too much? Uh, If it's a training program, they're allowed to do way too much because this is the only time they can learn it. Yeah. Yeah. But when you practice, you have to make your own. You have to draw your own line. In the sand. Yeah. 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 So that's interesting because a lot of people be out there saying, well, I, that's the case every day I yeah. practice. I'm like that. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, so it's about not using up too much of your vital energy yes. that you won't have then later in life. Yes. So just doing the, doing the right amount. Yeah. Just okay. like each one is born with chi, a certain quantum of energy, right. which we have to utilize till the end of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do see it sometimes in long-distance runners and things like that, that they uh, look drawn... They age very age fast. very fast after they a age certain very fast. period of time. Or yes. maybe some professional sports players, footballers, yes. and that sort of thing. They You're perfectly age. correct yeah. with that, yeah. But generally speaking, yoga people, although it can be quite physical, unless yeah. they've lost too much weight, yes. actually have quite a, a youthful look. I think it almost takes years off. So why do you think that is? They glow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They glow because they not only gain phys- they they not only cleanse their bodies right. with the postures, they also gain strength and they accumulate what is called as chaitanya. Right. Which is the brightness, which is why you feel them glowing. Mm. 
Yeah. So, so it's just a matter of getting the right level for you. Feel yes. it supporting you and not dra dragging you down. Not dragging you not down. Dragging you down. Yeah. Because everything comes in a measure. You yeah. cannot overdo anything, yeah. whether it is food, whether it is exercise, or whether it is play or anything. Yeah. Everything comes in a measure. Yeah, I think those are sort of the words that your mums of often use. You know, yeah. moderation in everything. You know, I think I remember my mum saying that to me like millions of times when I was <laughs> off to play tennis all afternoon and yeah. the next morning or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So moderation. Yes. Brilliant. Thank you so much, and You're we're going to continue our yeah. chat a little bit later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>